Hey guys, Max here from ShopSolarKits.com. Today's video, we're going to be reviewing the EB200 Solar Generator from Bluetti. We're going to go over some of the specs and the features. I'm going to show you what comes with the solar generator itself. We're going to throw it through a couple of tests to see what you can actually power. Then we're going to talk about who this might be right for. So the EB200 has a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. What that means is it's powerful enough to run, you know, about 99% of the appliances in your house, fridge, freezer, washing machine, microwave, kettle, those kind of things. We'll throw, we'll do a couple of tests later just to show that as well. Um, for the input, for how much solar you can get in, you can get 150 volts DC into this in order to charge. We've actually got videos that show you exactly how to do this, the specific configurations as well. But for the most part, that means you're roughly going to be able to get around seven to 800 watts of solar into the generator in order to charge it up. On the front here, we've got six of the standard household plugs. You know, these are like your, your normal outlets that you see in any home. You've got four USB, USB charging ports, one quick charging USB-C port. You've got two of the DC barrel plugs here. You've got a standard 12 volt outlet on the front. And right here on the far left, you've got a 25 amp output. So this is directly off the battery, you can get 25 amps. So that's huge, that's fantastic. Most people mobile living like in RVs and stuff really love that feature. You've also got the same touch screen as the AC200P and the AC200 Max. It's a very responsive touch screen. You can filter through everything that you need here as well. When you order your EB200, You'll get a carrying case like this that held, has all of the accessories in it. Standard wall plug. So one end here goes directly into the EB200. The other end would go into the wall and you can start charging this up with you know normal household power. You can also plug it into like a gas generator as well um, to start charging this up with a gas generator. This plug right here goes into the side for the DC input source and the other end here is what you use to connect either your solar panel adapter or the car charger. So if we want to charge with the wall, this is the one end of the wall charger plug. And we'll go in here and plug it in like that. The other end, which is the standard wall outlet, will go into your gas generator, diesel generator, or just into your home electrical plug, and this will start charging. This side here is where the most customers get confused. Note that there is a little dot up at the top, and this little dot will correspond to the same red dot that's on the top of your outlet. So I'll pull this back, plug it in, and now this is secured. The other end here, this XT90 plug, is what we use to connect solar panels or the car charger. Here's the MC4 cable for your solar panels. We plug them together like this. You can't screw it up. And now the other end are the MC4 cables that we can use to connect our solar panels. Leaving this plug in, if we want to connect the car charger, one end to go into the cigarette lighter of the vehicle, We'll still take the XT90 adapter, connect the same way that we did for the solar panels, and now this will go right into the cigarette lighter of your vehicle and you can start charging while you're driving. So I've just gone ahead and plugged in the wall charger and depending on the state of charge of the battery, it's common to get anywhere from 450 to around 500 watts of charge when you've got it plugged into the wall. Now that we have an overview of how the actual unit works and what's included, let's go throw it through a couple of tests and see how it performs. I've actually had this unit for a couple of months, so there, we're gonna start off with some footage from the summer um, when I was using it around the yard. All right here, so one of the first tests we're gonna do is see if the EB200 can power the lawnmower. It's at 62% state of charge, so we're gonna see how much of the whole back lawn that it can do. Maybe it can do all of it, uh, and if it can handle the surge of the lawnmower. All right, so we are down to 52%. All right, let's quickly go throw this onto a small fridge and see how it handles that. Here is the wine fridge. We will be plugging it in to see what happens. We've just plugged it in. We're up at around 132 watts or so. The fridge has been unplugged for a little bit, so um, it's kicking on the condensers to, to cool itself down. 
And then in short order, we should see that drop down from 132 watts down to maybe even zero or very low. So I'm gonna hold this here and just, just see what we get and then uh, see what it drops down to and how long that actually takes. 71, so it's starting to drop down now a little bit as it's cooled itself down. 60, 47, it's dropping down. 36 and zero look at that so this is very standard um, when you plug in a fridge it goes up high until it cools itself down and then takes very little energy to run you can see a uh, a wine fridge like that still at zero watts all right so I always throw it through a couple of the same tests a kettle is a very important one kettle it takes a lot of power to run so uh, i just want to see if the 2000 watt inverter can actually power a kettle so let's go ahead and do that now you can hear the fans kick on because this is going to be a large load and let's see how much it's taking so we're up at nearly 1500 watts and the ev200 is handling it perfectly So it's able to power a kettle. It obviously can power a fridge super easily as well. I wanna do the last two tests at the same time here. Um, we're gonna do AC and DC power at the same time. So I've turned on the AC and the DC, and I'm going to run the kettle, which is a huge draw. I'm gonna be charging up this laptop here, and I'm gonna be recharging the unit at the same time. So we're gonna see if it can run AC, DC at the same time, and if we can be charging it from the wall. The fans are kicking on and let's see what's going on on the screen. So you can see 1500 watts roughly being taken by the kettle. We're putting in around 430 or so from the wall and we're powering off the DC side as well and the EV200 can handle this all. So who might the EV200 be good for? We found that a lot of customers who purchase units like this will use them for emergency backup. So if you're losing power, maybe if there's wildfires, hurricanes, those type of things, and you're either gonna have a blackout or a brownout, uh, units like this, the EB200 specifically, it'll power fridge, freezers, all those appliances that you need in a power outage situation, and it'll handle them very well. Because of the battery chemistry, the lithium iron phosphate battery cells, that means that it has a very long cycle life. So that means the batteries last a long time, so if you're somebody who's using it in a mobile application, maybe as the main power source in a van or a big source of power for an RV or a schoolie, these are great as well because you can cycle them for a long time. Also, based on the size of the solar input, you can get around seven to 800 watts into it. You can recharge this thing very, very quickly as well. So it makes it useful um, in, in off-grid type of situations, like if you wanna power an outbuilding or a hunting cabin, those type of things as well. So there's many different uses for it. If you got any questions, concerns, whatever, you can give us a shout, we can walk you through it as well. Um, and yeah, take a look around on the website and I'll link to it uh, in the description of this video.